Okay, welcome back everybody. We are in the middle of something right now. Let me turn you around and show you. We gutted the shower in here. We were going to originally just take the tile and reglaze it and reglaze the tub and put a new faucet in. But once we got started, it's just too hard not to tear it all out. So we tore it all out. And we're gonna take a new tub and tile surround in and I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's not gonna be a super like, you're not gonna see a lot of probably time lapses or anything. You might see a few. Uh, but it's gonna be mostly, I'll show you how to do the first step, second step, third step, until we get it finished. And hopefully you get to see the finished video uh, fairly soon. So anyways, let me turn you around and show you what our first step is over here. First step is make sure your buddy is watching you. It's called copper. It's not getting used to the camera still. But anywho, so we've got it all gutted. That's the first step. Take everything out. Uh, you can see where the old tub used to rest on. It used to rest on those cleats right there. Our tub's probably gonna be a different height, so we'll remove those if we have to, and then we'll stick a cleat across this way, supporting the back and the sides of the tub. Uh, but we'll see what they require. Some tubs require that you pour a little bit of uh, like a mortar below it. That way when it sets down inside, it has a solid base. We'll see if this one requires it or not. Uh, still may or may not do it. But once we get that figured out, then we'll go ahead and work on the plumbing and the uh, drain, which is already there. Uh, and then we'll set up a new faucet. We've already soldered onto our copper depex just because it's easier to work with and that's what I'm wanting to do. So cold, of course is blue, red is hot. So we'll clean this out, put the new tub in and then we'll lock everything up and get it all concrete board screwed on, waterproofed and then we'll make it look beautiful again. So anyways, let's start unboxing the tub. Part of the first step is to install the drain for the bathtub uh, and they come in kits like this we wanted it to be the oil red bronze color to match our faucet and our doorknobs and hinges and such and so we got that one it is an inch and a half tub uh, drain it comes with the drain itself down here and then this is the vent uh, and then this is the drain cap and the, the plug so you lift that up and down to, uh, to control the water flow in and out of the tub and this is what it is laid out on the tub here so the drain piece will slide into the T portion here and then those these, these nuts to seal it. Uh, and there's a little washer in there that seals as it tightens down. Uh, this one is for the vent for the top and so it'll go in this section. And so this one will go in the drain hole here and the other one will go in the vent hole there and I'll show you what it looks like after you got it assembled. Okay, here's everything assembled. Now I had to make a slight modification to ours because our tub is a little bit deeper than the average tub. And so this pipe would just barely get into the gasket. So one day it could be an issue because if you tugged on the pipe down here to install it, it was going to separate here. So we ended up adding an extension tube here uh, in the middle to give it enough to where it seals properly. So this is sealed with a rubber gasket up here and then screwed in from the front side there. And then there's a, a um, stick basically go down here with a stopper that's down here uh, I won't be able to see it through there, but you can adjust it with the threads to make it stop right here. So when you lift up on that, on that tab there, it's going to pull it up here to where the water will drain. And when you drop it back down, it'll plug this area here. And that's how you can get a bath uh, in the bathtub. So these are just uh, little 
nuts, like I was saying, and then there's a little washer and it kind of has the acorn shape on that one side where it goes into here. And then you tighten this down and it compresses that rubber gasket and makes a watertight seal. So that's what those are for. So now that we've got this assembled, we can fit it in our bathroom in here, which brings us to the next step. So as you can see, I've re-insulated the wall because the old insulation was a little bit too small. It was wet in some places from the old shower. And so we wanted to re-insulate it. So we cut these to length, shoved them into place. Usually I staple and make them look all pretty, but it's not super important because uh, the, the concrete boards can go right on top of that. And then you just, these little small voids, you just take and stuff some in there. You don't want to stuff it too tight because it, uh, insulation uses um, air as an insulator as well. So if you compact it too tight, it's basically acting uh, on the studs are a way to lose energy. So if you look at a wall with a uh, temperature gauge through the sheetrock, you'll see that there, the lines will be blue on a cold day or hot, uh, red on a hot day because they transmit heat and stuff quicker. But anyways, a lot of nothingness there to say, don't stuff it in too tight, but that's what it looks like once you get it installed. And then I've called, uh, installed a cleat on the back side there. And that's so the back side tub can rest on it. Uh, we'll see if we need to install one over here or not. Not enough room on this side for sure, but this side maybe. And then we move on to the next step, which would be installing the water valve. As you can see, I used PEX, which some people dislike, but that is up to them on their house. So we've got these fitter fittings soldered here uh, and then the blue for cold, red for hot in the shower valve. It's all pressurized now and I'm checking for leaks before I start installing the concrete board. But now we can install the tub and then we can start installing the concrete board uh, and the tub faucet stick out there where it pulls the tub up and then we can pick our tile and go for it. I also forgot to mention that on the back side of this tub is a this little leg here and you can install it on this tub it keeps this front portion once it's down on the ground it keeps it in one place and so it doesn't get pushed in too far with the tile or too far back so that's what that's for I forgot to explain that so now we can install it this in there installed okay well we may have done a few more steps since I dropped that tub in place <laughs> so let me cover that with you uh, you can see those little black screws down yonder those are securing the tub itself to the studs that way it can't go anywhere and that way it's nice and square and level according to what you want because you want the water to drain of course but the tub already has a sloped base on it so you want this to be level for tiling purposes uh, and then we got it anchored down here on the feet. So this is nice and flat all the way across. And then we've got the concrete board installed. Now the concrete board is used to, as a backer, kind of a waterproof backer for tile. That way if any water gets through, it's not on drywall. And so we've got that screwed in place. You can see the lines. We just used a level to mark where the studs were. We screwed them in place and we came back in and screwed some more. So this is about a minimal screwing, but we might add some screws here after we get done with this segment of the process, uh, and then we're going to do some waterproofing before we do the tile. But that tile work and waterproofing is going to be on the next video. But I wanted to share with you a few more things about this step that you might not know. So these concrete boards come three feet wide by five feet tall. So these, this section and this section are exactly a full piece. So three feet wide, five feet tall. It works really well for just setting it on top of the tub and then ending it there. Now, if you want your tile to go to the ceiling, of course you'll have to put more pieces in, but we're going to decide that later. Once we get the tile started, we're gonna figure out where we wanna end, and then we can finish off this with drywall or with more concrete board. Uh, and then the window seal is actually already, it's just the old, what they have below. I'm gonna waterproof this and chip off all the glue. Uh, it's already sloped a certain degree, probably like three degrees or so. That will give the water uh, some sheddability there. So we'll bring the tile up, bring the top stone across, that way if water gets up here, it'll flow off and not get in the window seal. But we're also going to caulk and red guard this, which is like a, a glue of sorts that's waterproofing. And so we'll show you how to do that in the next video. But we've got the drain installed as well. Uh, and that's all downstairs stuff. If you have 
house that has a downstairs like mine, then it's pretty easy because you just go down there and tighten the pipes and you're good to go. But if you have a house that has a concrete slab, you're gonna have to do all of that before you stick this on. So beware that you can't just stick it down and you can't access it later. So unless you have a downstairs like I do, which is pretty convenient. Also, I have pointed out that we painted the bathroom. So the bathroom is now a color called Snowfall, I believe, and that is a color uh, called Revere Pure, I believe. We got that recommendation from our favorite interior designer. Uh, and you can follow her on Reads Indeed on Instagram. But anywho, that's where we've gotten to. So we've got to do the floor still. We've got to put a vent fan in up here to draw all, all the steam and the stink, like I said in the last video. Uh, and then we've also painted this light fixture. Let's see, turn it off. Yeah, so it used to be like a silver color. So we cleaned it, sanded it, painted it a brushed bronze color to match all the door hardware and hinges and all that stuff. So a little upgrade there. Um, yeah, so that's that's about it. That's what we've done. So a few tips. Um, I like to pressure test, of course, the pipes in the wall. Uh, and then I like to stub out here with copper. That way it's nice and sturdy for the pipe fixture. This slides on to here and then tightens down with a little Allen wrench there. And then the faucet itself threads onto that. So those are still to come once we get the tile done. But I'm gonna do a mock fit up here to make sure that it actually fits nicely and is at the right depth. And then also you wanna make sure that this is in the same line as your drain. Because if we're standing in the shower, I've seen showers like this, this sometimes is off-centered and it looks terrible because the drain's down here and they have it to the right or left. Yeah, it's terrible. But and I may have accidentally done that one time and had to redo it. Not in this one, of course, but I've done a few. Um, yeah, so that's about it for this video. I'm probably gonna do a whole separate video on how to do the tile and uh, waterproofing and all that stuff. And then we'll have a finish with the bathroom. It'll look so much nicer. But anyways, I want to say thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. It can be a nice one or it can be a rude one. Just make sure it's, make sure you'd be nice when you're rude. Make it constructive criticism. So I'm sure there's things I could learn and I'm sure there's things you could learn too. But anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, like I just said, leave a comment down below uh, and don't forget to look in the description for a few different things that you can enjoy free on me and I get something from it too. So anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good one. God bless. You don't like that? That's yourself. You don't like yourself? <laughs>